this is a game where he was white against uh, Miguel Quinteros, and the game began pawn to e4 and was a Sicilian defense. So, you know, anytime we get a Sicilian defense, we know that uh, we know that it's uh, well, we're looking for a fight. Okay, so that's good. Knight to f3, pawn to e6, and Olafsson plays the move d4, the open Sicilian. We have an exchange of pawns, and this is a very standard uh, position in the Sicilian. Here, Quinteros plays the move a6, which is known as the con variation of the Sicilian. And uh, many moves are possible here, but Olafsson plays knight c3, queen c7, played by Quinteros, and bishop to e2. Now, here's the thing about this particular opening for black. The con variation of the Sicilian is a very solid option for black. However, early on, black has to be very careful because, like, just take a look at the scenario right now. White has three minor pieces in the game and, and black has none. And white is ready to castle and black is not. Now, black doesn't have any weaknesses per se, like in the pawn structure and is very solid in covering all of the, you know, covering all of the infiltration squares, but Black's lack of development, you know, Black has to proceed with great caution here, or the lack of development can really, can really hurt. So, Quinteros plays Knight F6, and Olafsson castles, and then he plays B5. And again, I would already say that b5 is a, is a step too far by Quinteros, because especially after what our man of the hour played, which was the move bishop to f3, which is a really good move. Bishop to f3 puts some pressure directly on this diagonal, which doesn't allow black to just casually develop, because here white is threatening the move pawn to e5 with an attack on the knight, and a discovered attack on the rook in the corner. Knight c6 was played, but unfortunately, now there's the move pawn to e5. And this is already a pretty big problem for Quinteros. Because where is that knight supposed to go? He can't he can't advance it to the middle. Again, capturing this pawn is not possible. If you capture with the knight, you lose the rook in the corner. If you capture with the queen, you lose the rook in the corner. At least you lose this knight. Because after pawn takes, bishop takes, and we have a fork. So, we're already, you know, getting... Quinteros, this one move, knight to c6, is already a problem. Uh, bishop to b7, there's still the move e5, though. That's the thing. And, you know, you if you trade here, this problem is that I'm attacking your knight and I'm attacking the rook in the corner. So, yeah, it's just very difficult. If black plays the move e5, then black is giving up a lot of central squares, like the d5 square and the knight on f5. And so this is, again, pretty bad for... pretty bad for... Uh, for Quinteros. He really should not have played this way. But okay, so he played knight c6, and then Olafsson played uh, e5, which really takes advantage of his lead in development. And I think that, you know, something to be taken away from this game is that, you know, you have to pounce, you have to strike while the iron is hot. And the iron is certainly hot for white here, because white is very safe, you know, White's not going to lose to checkmate anytime soon. Black, whose king is in the middle and who lags behind development a little bit, Black has to be very careful, particularly because this knight doesn't really have anywhere to go. In the game, what happened was pawn to b4. Quinteros tried to counterattack in an effort to keep his pieces in the middle, right? So he's like, well, if you move this knight away, then maybe I can play my knight to the middle. Well, Olafsson traded, Quinteros traded, Olafsson traded, and now you can see here 
there's already major problems for Black in the position. Black is grossly behind in development. This pawn on f6 is still alive. White's bishop is very powerful here. And white has the move, so white has the tempo too. So white has a much safer king, a huge lead in development, and white uh, white continues to enhance that lead in development with another tempo gaining move. So what did Olafsson play here, which, you know, just puts the pedal to the metal, sort of puts salt in the wound? So Olafsson played the tempo gaining move, bishop to f4, which is a, a beautiful move, and that bishop cannot be captured. If that bishop is captured, the game ends by checkmate. So the bishop is not protected. However, if it's captured, that lured the queen away from the defense of the c pawn. Now the bishop comes in for a check. And... You know, there's nothing for the black king to do. Black has to block with the bishop, and then queen takes bishop checkmate. So he decides to play bishop to f4 because he gets that move for free, noticing that this pawn drops if the queen captures. He gets that move for free and with tempo. Uh, some of you were suggesting the move queen to d4, which is a really good move as well. And uh, bishop to f4 uh, is better because it gains tempo and develops a new piece. But queen to d4 is also very good as well. Because you're threatening pawn takes pawn. And if they play pawn takes pawn, that, you know, you're still keeping the tempo. You're not allowing black to develop. And in the meantime, you're going to just continue to pursue the attack on black's king before black can get developed. But bishop f4 I still think is the best move, and that, and that was played. Queen to d7. And now I'm curious what you guys would do. And and if you have listened to anything I've ever said in one of my lectures, you would know what not to do. I don't know if you're going to know what to do, but you're going to know what not to do. The move is unclear what we're going to play, but the one thing we are not going to do is trade queens here. When you have the attack, up material or not, it doesn't actually matter. When you have the attack, you don't trade. And you don't trade your, your major pieces off when you're, when you're the one with the initiative. So indeed, Olafsson played queen to e2. Connecting the rooks, avoiding the queen trade, and preparing to bring a rook to the open file. Kinteros is in a tough spot here because if he takes this pawn, which seems like the right thing to do, after rook to d1, it's very hard to suggest a move. Because let's say you play queen b7. Well, I play queen c4, bearing down on the c pawn, right? I'm, I'm simply threatening bishop takes c6, and you know all of white's pieces are in play, Let's say you play bishop to d7, trying to guard that, and then I play this monster move, boom. Rook takes d7, getting rid of the guard, and now bishop, bishop takes c6 is coming in. If queen takes, bishop takes c6 is obvious. If king takes, we play rook to d1, and... The king has no place to go because after the king moves, then this hangs and white's pieces are coming crashing through here. So bishop takes c6, we're threatening the queen, we're threatening discoveries, and black's king is just totally dead. There's just so much going on here. This poor king is not going to live. So that would go that that could go downhill really quickly. So Conteros plays queen to b7. Olafsson casually captures back. And one of the nice things about this is it's not like he's going for an endgame. The more open lines, the better for these rooks. And black's king is just a goner. Bishop to d7. Rook to b1. Te another tempo gaining move. Improving the rook. Getting the rook into the game with an attack. Queen a7. Rook f to d1. And 
there's no better, I mean, basically White could have not done a better job here. I mean, every single one of White's pieces is, I mean, more or less in its like optimal position. I mean, you know, within reason, I can't think of better places. And now it's just a matter of time before White's extra development cost Black the game. So Quinteros took this pawn, I mean, which was, which was lingering over there. Queen c4, we know what happens here. We know what queen c4 is eyeballing because we saw it in a previous variation. So one of the ideas is to capture the bishop and then infiltrate on the c6 square. So bishop to c5 blocking that. And now Olafsson plays a very sweet move. He plays rook takes d7 anyway. And I love this very much. So number one, if the queen takes, then the queen no longer guards the bishop. So white takes the bishop and keeps all the threats intact. And this is just a disaster. So the king took, which makes sense. By the way, if you don't take then what are you going to do? Your queen is in danger. I just captured a bishop. You could resign. So the king takes. And now here was the method to his madness. This is just forcing move after forcing move after forcing move. Just putting black on the chopping block uh, because of his lack of development. Bishop takes c6. A great move. And sacrifices the bishop to lure this guy forward the king takes and then the whole point was to check the king on this diagonal where the king cannot go backward yeah just terrible and uh after king to d5 the only move well here comes the rook and what are you gonna do this is just, I mean, you have to start giving all of your pieces away. And the, the, the game is, the game is, base, I mean, the game is over. Black is a dead man walking, can play a few more moves, but not going to get anywhere. Because here, Black already has to forfeit the queen. Because if the king moves, then we have check and checkmate. Hi, I'm Peter Giannatos, founder of the Charlotte Chess Center. If you enjoyed these videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to watch these videos live, be sure to follow us on Twitch.